For well over a decade now, the City Glider has been a key part of Brisbane's bus network, and today, I wanted to have a closer look at the service in a little more detail. As you probably know by now, Brisbane is a city of bus transport, and while there is a fairly large rail network, and of course a substantial ferry network along the river, when it comes to patronage, buses are by far the most utilised public transport in the city. Among Australian cities, its position is also pretty unique, with Brisbane's buses running at a local government level, even if they're contracted by TransLink, a state government agency, to perform the service. In most cities, the state transport agency will engage a large private contractor, someone like a TransDev, a Kinetic, a Transit Systems, a Keolis Downer, a Busways or a CDC group. Alternatively, it used to be a lot more common for buses to be directly operated by state governments, although recently, operations such as the State Transit Authority of New South Wales and equivalents across other states have been disbanded. Brisbane's unique situation is nothing new, and it stems from Brisbane's tram days where council used to run trams and the state used to run trains, and they were competing for patronage rather than complementing each other. And while the trams may have been gone now for more than 50 years, the implications of this approach remain, and train to bus connectivity is still suboptimal across much of Brisbane. I figured though that this actually provides a great opportunity to talk about the original Blue City Glider service, which has been a staple of Brisbane's bus network since 2010, connecting West End to Tenerife. In 2013, the Maroon City Glider was also introduced, which connects Ashgrove and Cooparoo. But for today, let's stick to the Blue Glider, also numbered as Route 60. For the purposes of this review, I also thought it would be fitting to jump on board a City Glider bus. And what better option is there than the Rainbow Livery Glider, numbered 1670, which I caught at Christmas time last year. In its early days, the City Glider started off using standard length buses, the diesel powered MAN 18310s, which were staples of the route for close to a decade. Whilst the bus service was well used, I always felt that those original vehicles were suboptimal for the service, as unlike all other Brisbane transport buses at the time, rear door boarding was permitted and the single leaf rear doors slowed down boarding and alighting. Around 2016 and early 2017, Brisbane Transport had a Mercedes-Benz Citaro on trial, and I always thought that that bus would be fabulous for the City Glider. But unfortunately, it never got the chance to be tested on bus routes that would have been best suited to it, thanks to that pesky 2.5 metre width rule. By 2019, it seemed that Brisbane Transport and I were on the same page, and progressively, the older MANs were sent back to regular route service, and a fresh batch of Volvo B8 RLEs were wrapped in the City Glider livery, complete with dual leaf rear doors. The larger back doors made rear door boarding much more efficient, and since the service has been a cashless bus since day one, it helped to reduce dwell times at busy CBD bus stops. The standard length B8 RLE period was short lived, however, as today we have another type of bus on the service with more doors and a bendy bit in the middle. In July 2021, the Volvo B8 RLEAs were finally introduced onto the City Glider after months of testing. And while I lived in Newcastle at the time when they entered service, I remember seeing the Arctics being tested around Christmas time the year before when I still lived in Brisbane. For a long time, I always felt that the City Glider could do with the extra capacity of an articulated bus, as during peak periods the service is pretty well utilised. Further, when it comes to high frequency bus services, many of Sydney's now defunct Metro bus services were ran by articulated buses in their distinctive red livery, and further afield in the Greater Toronto and Hamilton area, there are bus rapid transit services like Brampton Transit's Zoom and York Region Transit's Viva service both of which have articulated buses in their fleets. So I am glad to see the day that the City Glider has also got some bendy buses to provide extra capacity. 
In terms of comfort and features, these buses are substantially similar to Brisbane's other Volvo B8 RLEAs that you'll see on high demand route services like the 66 and 111. They feature comfortable bench seats, plenty of stop bells and of course USB charging, all things which are nice to have. If you're after a more detailed review of this bus type, click up at the top to go and check it out. According to WA Transit Videos, who is quite a whiz when it comes to vehicle specs, these have a 350 horsepower and 1400 newton meter of torque variant of the D8K engine, a shorter final drive ratio and a power program for the 6-speed ZF box which gives them some extra oomph. Let's see how these performance figures fare on the City Glider. In summary, not bad at all. The ride is quite smooth, although engine noise is probably a little more intrusive than it would be on a rigid B8. That being said, we are also now in 2022, and it really would have been nice to have seen a greater emphasis on reducing emissions on a vehicle that primarily spends its life on inner urban bus routes. Sydney, for example, has quite a sizable contingent of electric buses at transit systems, which are being used on urban services. At least these buses are rated for Euro 6 emissions compliance, although a level of hybridisation or full battery electric tech would be even better to help reduce noise and pollutants on city streets. So now that we've covered off on the regularly scheduled City Glider buses, what about some of the oddball sites from over the years? Sometimes there just aren't enough livery buses ready for service, and you need to pull regular buses from the fleet onto the glider routes. I've seen some of the compressed natural gas powered MANs on City Glider duty before, as well as some of the Optimus body B7 RLEs. On the flip side, I also once caught a City Glider livery bus on a 66, as well as on the free loop, which turned out to both be quite surprising. I'd love to know if you've seen any funnier combinations down below. Having caught City Glider services on and off for a number of years, it's great to see the route is evolving. And as West End, South Bank, Brisbane CBD, Fortitude Valley and Tenerife transition into centres focused around living, working and leisure, the importance of the City Glider service is only going to continue to grow.
This service complements the 199, which is, although frequent, an all-stop service which is better suited to local journeys or for connections into New Farm. Both of these services, though, provide an important tie-in to the ferry network for accessing centres like Bulimba or the University of Queensland at either end. And with that, since we are now heading along Skyring Terrace, my journey is almost at its end, so it's time to get ready to jump off the bus and watch the Rainbow Glider depart. Thanks for joining me and I will see you again soon.